What's up everybody? This is Connor. Welcome to or back to Three Pedal Devils. In today's video we're going to try and fix my Robo 3D R1 Plus 3D printer. Alright, so I got this printer about four years ago. I bought it with some graduation money from high school. Uh, it was a pretty good printer right off the bat. I was throwing out prints kind of daily without any issues. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long I was able to print for before my first issue, but once they started, they just kept on rolling and I've had tons of issues with this printer. A lot of the times it's taken the fun out of 3D printing for me, which is very unfortunate, but I printed some really cool stuff on here. I really want to get it back up and running again. So it's probably been down for about six to eight months now at this point. After running it pretty much consistently for a week, uh, I ran into a major issue where my heated bed would no longer heat up so it was just staying at room temp even though it was commanded at about 60 celsius. I ripped the bottom plate off the printer and basically found this. The heated bed connector had melted itself and was most likely the issue as to why my bed was no longer heating. I got pretty frustrated because I didn't want to put any more money into this printer but I headed over to the forums and posted my issue. Some people told me where I could find and buy the connectors, but they told me that my ramps board, the controller, was also most likely affected and would need to be replaced, which I was super uh, disappointed about because it's a very expensive component of this printer and I didn't really want to put any more money into it just to have more issues down the road because they claimed that most likely that was probably destroyed also in the process. I've just been a little bit too scared to test it because I feel like I know the answer that I'm gonna need a new board. But I think today's the day where if I do, I'm gonna go ahead and just order one. So let's check it out. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and turn the printer on and then use this controller here to basically uh, preheat the bed so that this port on the board would be seeing voltage if it was functioning properly. And then I'll go ahead and read it with my Fluke multimeter. Um, basically see if our output is functioning. It should be at about 12 volts, so let's take a look. Let's just preheat for PLA. Now we have commanded uh, hot end temp of 210 degrees Celsius and a commanded heated bed of 55. So let's throw our leads on the terminals there. 12.6! Wow, it's functioning! 12.6, huh? Awesome. So. That is very good news. What we've just discovered is that the control board is still functioning and the heated bed output still works properly. So I don't think I need a new ramps board. Uh, this might be a simple fix that I procrastinated for eight months for no reason. Uh, let's just head over to the computer, order some of our connectors, wait a couple days and then throw a new connector on the bed power her up, see what happens. We might be able to print right away. Got the parts in the mail yesterday. So the pack I got was the male and the female terminals. So I'm just going to replace the male connector. Let's just take the old burnt one out. Wow. Throw these in to try and start her back up. Well, Helps if you actually plug it in. So I thought this was going to be a much longer repair than it actually was, but I guess uh, everything's working. So I got it preheated and I got some filament loaded up, I got the bed cleaned up, and I have the axes all oiled and lubed up like they should be. Um, I guess now we'll just go ahead and fire off a test print, so we'll probably ro roll a time lapse. Hopefully the print goes successful and uh, yeah. So 
So the print finally finished up. It took about four hours and five minutes. Uh, it was kind of fun because I just fired off a test print that was the first one on the SD card. I didn't really know what it was printing, so it was kind of fun trying to guess uh, what the object was that was being created on the build plate. Uh, the print didn't go super smoothly. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what we got. Barely fits. There it stands on a dirt road. The sunlight on a clean clothes. Stay forever. Roll the pinches together. The mountains fall into the sea. Oh, if I built the frame that gave you my name, would you wander forever with me? And drag way up over my door. So here's a final look at the two parts we printed. This is that second one, uh, that bracket that we printed. Uh, obviously the time lapse showed I ran out of filament during the print, so you can kind of see here what the infill looks like. This part didn't quite finish up, but essentially all I needed was the outline of this part so that I could test fit it and make sure that the design's going to work so that I can go ahead and print the two full thickness ones. and put my heated inserts in for the threading. We got the moose here. Uh, this leg kind of broke off because I was messing with it. And uh, I just kind of let it keep printing to see if it would uh, clean itself up. And it looks like it did. It's a pretty good print. So in one of the future videos, I'm going to uh, 3D print some shift knobs for our cars, kind of test out what shapes we like best for shift knobs before we go ahead and machine some billet aluminum ones, so uh, look forward to that in a future video. Thanks for watching, be sure to comment on the video on things you'd like to see us 3D print next, subscribe if you haven't already, thanks, have a great day everybody.